Guys, it happened. Um, so, it, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It is 4 a.m. here. I was getting up for my 5 a.m. run. Uh, and as it turns out, Regulation D got announced. And it begins July 1st. So that is in a month from now. It is June 1st now. Um, and yeah, I uh, it's, it's interesting because technically NAIC... The only non-World Championship tournament begins a day too early for this to be the rule set for. Unless they make a special announcement saying, hey, NAIC will actually be this rule set. Um, so, yeah, currently, Worlds is the only format running this rule set. At that, this is the biggest drop of Pokemon we've had for a new format um, all year. I couldn't fit them all into one box. I couldn't fit them all into two boxes. We have almost three boxes worth of Pokemon that are now legal in VGC as of July 1st. So let's get into it. Um, this is an emergency video going through my initial thoughts on every Pokemon that is legal. We have what? This is a four by one, two, three, four, five, six, 24, 48, plus 12, so that's 60, 62 new Pokemon that are legal. Obviously, it's more than that because we have the pre-Evos too. But yeah, uh, let's just hop right into it. If you guys enjoy, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications, and uh, let's do this thing. Actually, let's organize these in. They're sort of in Pokedex order. I went out of order a little bit, but yeah, let's, let's just talk about each one of these Pokemon that have now become legal. First of all, Charizard. I don't think Charizard's going to be that good of a Pokemon. Let me actually open up Picolytics so we can also take a look at what's common right now and just compare it to like the metagame whenever we need to. Um, I don't think Charizard's going to be that great of a Pokemon considering it doesn't really have the speed here to do anything uh, it really, really needs to. That being said, it does have one thing in particular it can do, and I think it's actually just going to be a Choice Scarf Terra Fire Pokemon with Sun Up. Um, that spams Heat Wave with Solar Power. So, yeah, I mean, you could also choice specs it and put it next to, like, a Murkrow. I think that's going to be, like, the only thing Charizard really does. Um, and we've known it's been able to do that for a while. It's, like, a strong special attacker, man. Um, I believe its Heat Waves are stronger than, like, Torkoal's, like, Charcoal-boosted um, eruptions once you do this. So that that is a scary Pokemon. It'll be able to one-shot quite a few things. Um, I don't think it's going to be amazing. A Pokemon that I am cautiously keeping my eye on, though, is going to be Alolan Raichu. I actually didn't realize Alolan Raichu was in the game, but I, it makes sense because Raichu's in the game. So Alolan Raichu is interesting because we really don't have any super good electric types right now. If we actually take a look at, like, common electric type Pokemon, it's Iron Hands. It's Iron Hands and a little Rotom once in a while. Um, and Raichu does fall within what I would call an acceptable speed tier for an Electro-type Pokemon to be viable. Um, obviously, regular Raichu isn't that good, but uh, we might be able to see some stuff happen with Surge Surfer. I, I don't know. Tapu Koko isn't legal, though. Uh, but yeah, it has access to, like, Fake Out, Eerie Impulse. Does it get Expanding Force still? It doesn't get Expanding Force. You don't get that via transfer. Um, yeah, it has, like, Fake Out, Encore, Thunderbolt, Volt Switch. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm interested to see what it can do with, like, Surge Surfer. I don't think it's going to be, like, the best Pokemon. Uh, but being able to hit things with, like, two decent stabs is not bad. Um, there's a lot of Terra Poison Pokemon right now. So, like, you know, I could actually see, like, Alolan Raichu being ran with, like, you know, Psychic and Thunderbolt. It'll be able to, like, actually hit Terra Poison Mons. Um, it's a decent check to uh, Glamora. Because, you know, while we don't have a lot of, like, actual decent Psychic Mons, um, that's mainly just, like, Indeedy and Armor Rouge. It, it'll be, like, a fast Psychic Mon, which is something that we're kind of lacking right now. Uh, you know, no one's really running <laughs> any of, like, the other Psychic Mons in the format. I believe Gardevoir is in this game. Not entirely sure. Pretty sure it is. Uh, yeah, no one's running Gardevoir. So, you know, that's a niche they could fill. Uh, Alolan Dug Trio is going to be bad, but I do need to make note of it. Choice Scarf Alolan Dug Trio can run Iron Head and probably one shot of Fluttermane question mark. I don't think so. Uh, we're not going to spend too much time on that. Alolan Persian is actually a solid introduction. Um, Fur Coat Alolan Persian has done well in previous uh, 
restricted, not restricted decks, but in previous um, regional decks formats, uh, being able to run like a set like this, uh, usually it'll be a berry. So it'll run fur coat, which will double its defense. With max HP, it's actually very difficult to KO. Uh, actually, it might just be optimal to run that then. Um, it has access to fake out, parting shot, foul play, and taunt, which is really all it needs to get going, but it also has tools at its disposal like Icy Wind that are very useful. Uh, it has Helping Hand. It does have access. Uh, does it actually still have access to? No, it doesn't have knockoff anymore. Did it even ever get knockoff? I forget. I don't know. It's an early video, but yeah. Um, it's mainly just like a support Pokemon. It has a really good speed tier at 115. While it doesn't have Prankster, um, it'll be able to outspeed basically anything it needs to uh, and do the support moves it needs to do. Uh, that being said, in a format with Fluttermane, I don't actually see it being the best support Pokemon, especially when you also have things like Murkrow in the game that'll be able to do its job for it. Uh, pr probably better, but it does give us a new fake out user, which is something to look out for. Uh, the more fake out in the game, the more we're going to see like Covert Cloak pop up or Terra Ghost become more common. So that is a meta game trend I expect to see with some of these introduced. Berserker is probably very bad, but, but it does have fake out and iron head. It does have fake out and iron head. And I believe it also has like close combat and other like cool support moves. Uh, Assault Vest Berserker, while not the best Pokemon, is technically another Steel type we get to use. Um, and having, you know, extra stab on its Iron Heads isn't bad. Especially, I, I'm, I don't know, we might be able to see some cool combos with, like, Golden Go with Steely Spirit. Like, that might be a thing. Actually, that's terrifying. Berserker with Fake Out next to Terra Steel Golden Go is actually very scary, and I no longer want to think about that one. Uh, Hisuian Arcanine, new Intimidate user. It's not going to use Intimidate. It's going to use Rockhead, in my opinion. If you want a good defensive Pokemon, you're better off using regular Arcanine, in my opinion. Uh, that being said, Hisui and Arcanine might be serviceable, um, even though it does always get one shot by Palafin Jet Punch. Uh, you might be able to use like a Terra on it to cover for that option. Um, but I do think that the introduction of Landorus will make it quite bad, unless you're running something like this, where it's just going to be clicking like Head Smash Rocks, or Head Smash with like Rockhead. Uh, and maybe you'll slap like a, a choice band on it or a choice scarf. Whichever one of these gets the job done uh, better, in my opinion. Uh, Flare Blitz is also like a really nice option for it. Uh, I would say that like Hisui and Arcanine, if you're not running Rockhead, you're kind of throwing. I don't know. Um, it, it, it is a pretty strong Pokemon, though. I mean, like it's it's bulky. It's like decently fast, but it's not as fast as regular Arcanine. Obviously, regular Arcanine having... 95 speed 110 attack this thing trades off a little bit of speed for that uh, higher attack stat but i don't think that's going to matter too much so yeah uh my little thoughts on that guy galarian Slowbro. it depends let me see something does it get um chilly reception it gets chilling water so galarian Slowbro is interesting in my opinion because it is another psychic type that we have access to does it get expanding force no do you get Expanding Force? No. Yeah, these guys aren't going to be that good, in my opinion. Um, but it is like a new Poison type. Poison is a solid uh, typing this gen because of the ability to take on Fluttermane. That being said, it is a Psychic Poison type, so it's not going to be able to eat the uh, Shadow Balls too well. Um, as far as stuff that it can do, it's really just Coverage Trick Room. It's like regular Slow Bro, but without the Water type, so maybe a little bit worse. Slow King is similar to, you know, regular Slow King. You know, it doesn't have the water typing, making it arguably a little bit worse. Yeah, I, I don't see these guys being all that great. Alolan Muck is going to be the greatest Pokemon of all time. I say that with uh, a heavy heart, knowing it's probably going to be mid. Um, but yeah, so Alolan Muck I actually have high hopes for. It does have the ability Gluttony, allowing it to hold a Figgy Berry instead of a Citrus Berry, letting it heal a little bit more HP than usual. That being said, the ability that I'm really interested in is going to be Power of Alchemy. Um, we don't... Power of Alchemy is a lot easier to use on Alolan Muck, in my opinion. Basically, what happens is once its partner gets KO'd, that'll allow for Alolan Muck to take uh, the partner's ability over and then just use it. So, let's say that you had an Arcanine next to your Alolan Muck and it got KO'd by Palafin. Now, you know, the Intimidate that was already active transfers over to Alolan Muck and activates again, Intimidate every Pokemon in front of it. There are different abilities that this Pokemon can use pretty effectively. One of my favorite combos in previous formats was using a Parish Trap team. And the way that you beat a Parish Trap team is obviously to either KO everything in front of it or KO just the Gothitelle to get rid of it and allow for, you know, 
you to switch. But a cheeky thing that I like to do was actually swap in Power of Alchemy, Alola Muk next to the Gothitelle, knowing very well that was the turn the Gothitelle was going to go down and taking over the Shadow Tag. So that is something I'm excited to try. Things that uh, Alola Muk has access to that a lot of Pokemon can't really boast is actually going to be Knockoff, which is very strong. Um, it's another Disable user, but I don't think that's actually a very good move on Alola Muk because of how slow it is. Uh, but yeah, it's basically just like a knockoff Pokemon with like Poison Jab. Um, it also gets Gunk Shot, but I think Poison Jab is a bit better. Uh, it does have Shadow Sneak. Does it not get Shadow Sneak anymore? Did they get rid of that? What? Okay, that's crazy. It has like Ice Punch and stuff. Um, an Assault Vest set could reasonably run Acid Spray or even Snarl. Uh, but yeah, uh, I do think that it's just going to be like a solid Pokemon all, all around. Poison Touch isn't that bad. Yeah, I mean... It'll do what it needs to do, in my opinion. Pursuing Electrode. Not really worth talking about because we have Regieleki. But uh, Chloroblast is a move that it learns that Regieleki does not. That'll one-shot a Palafin. Probably. Probably. You know, you only got 80 special attack. Uh, it is pretty fast. Doesn't get Electro Web. It's worse than, um, it's worse than Regieleki. I don't really have anything to say about this guy. I don't think he's going to be good. Tauros move on uh articuno i mean a lot of people are excited for articuno with snow i regret to inform you that if you don't want to be weak to rock slide you would have to terra into a non-ice type which would get rid of the snow boost and rock slide's one of the best moves in doubles and landers is now in the game yeah um i, I don't expect articuno to be good uh, it does have new tools. I do think that Articuno with Terrastalization is going to be far better than previous versions of it. Um, this is another freeze-dry Pokemon, but its special attack set is only 95. You know, we do have Iron Bundle that does its job a little bit better. Um, and yeah, I, I don't I don't see it being that important of a Pokemon. Uh, Galarian Articuno, I do actually see having a niche, to be honest. Uh, I think that Galarian Articuno uh, was kind of held back by Dynamax existing uh, in previous generations. Uh, along or not previous generations in the previous generation uh, along with the fact that Urshifu is running around Urshifu is running around again spoiler uh, but Articuno is not going to be able to Terra into a different type uh, which is really nice uh, I think that like Galarian Articuno is pretty much always going to want to run Terra Blast in some way shape or form uh, probably always going to want to have Tailwind but it does all it does also have access to like Trick Room uh, Freezing Glare is a really good tool for it uh, and probably just like Hurricane or Air Slash, whichever one's better. Uh, but yeah, some defensive types that Galarian Articuno can run that are actually really solid. I would say Fairy is probably the best. Fairy covers the dark uh, weakness it has. It also allows it to uh, resist a lot more types than, you know, Psychic and, uh, or than Psychic and Flying would allow it to. Uh, and just Terra Blast is like a really solid move for it. Does it also get Dazzling Gleam? If it gets Dazzling Gleam, then you don't even really need to run Terra Blast. I don't believe it does. But yeah, no, uh, that's actually like, I think it's going to be a solid Pokemon. I'm, I'm a little, uh, I'm cautiously optimistic for it. Regular Zapdos is, does it get Heat Wave? Okay, we're not playing BDSP Zapdos. BDSP Zapdos would have been atrocious. One of the worst Pokemon ever. Uh, but now that it has access to every tool that it needs, Tailwind, Thunderbolt, Heat Wave, Terastalization. Uh, I think that Zapdos is actually a really, really solid Pokemon. We did see it do a lot of work in GS Cup formats. Um, obviously, we're not playing GS Cup format, but having another base 100 Pokemon and a good electric type is really, really important for this format. I can see like Safety Goggles or Citrus Berry Zapdos being really good. Static is obviously quite a decent ability. Really, I think all you would do with this guy is actually run like a fairly bulky Zapdos. Um, probably hit like, you know, one of the bumps, whatever bump you need to. Probably just the first one is like serviceable, to be honest. Am I doing it? Whatever, this one. Um, you would want to outspeed basically anything you need to under Tailwind. Um, actually, can you outspeed... If you were to run a Timid Zapdos, could you outspeed Iron Bundle? You have to hit 155. Okay, maybe Timid Zapdos is the play, unless you can hit that with Modest. Can you hit it with Modest? You can't. Okay, so yeah, Timid Zapdos, 155, is probably the play. You could actually, in that case, probably run like a Covert Cloak. That would allow you to reliably get off Tailwind uh, and never get like Icy Wind speed dropped. And then you would just run like enough special attack to deal with opposing Iron Bundle. Probably, actually, you would still probably be fairly bulky. Maybe something like this. This is probably a bad Zapdos spread, but like this is just like my initial thoughts. Tailwind, Thunderbolt, Heatwave, 
Um, does it get helping hand? It does get helping hand. That could be interesting. Probably just want to run like protect or something like that though. Uh, Volt Switch is another option. Yeah, actually Zapdos is probably going to be one of the best Pokemon in the game. I'm excited for this one. Let's just go with protect. Yeah, I actually think Covert Cloak Zapdos goes crazy. Now that I think about it. If you run it bulky enough, does it get Roost still? Maybe on like Wo Chen team, Zapdos is the play. Uh, they're actually like decently synergistic. Ooh, I'm cooking. I'm cooking with, with Zapdos. Hold on. All right. Let me keep that in the back of my mind. Galarian Zapdos also going to be fairly decent. It is, in, uh, it is a Pokemon that has uh, Defiant. I actually think that Galarian Zapdos is okay. Um, I do think it has to run Focus Sash in this format. Um, because of how fast everything is, you're unlikely to get to do anything without that. Uh, it is another Tailwind user. I don't think it's going to be that good. Uh, in previous formats, we would just see it run like Close Combat or Thunderous Kick. Um, U-Turn. I guess We actually saw Quick Guard on occasion. I think Quick Guard was fairly decent. Um, but it would just be like Detect and then... I don't know. Sometimes Brave Bird. You would only really run Brave Bird on non-Sash sets though. So like Safety Goggle sets was like something that you'd run with that. Um, so yeah. I don't think it's going to be the best Pokemon. It definitely is going to be a Terra Sync, in my opinion, with how good Fluttermane and Iron Bundle are. Uh, you would want to Terrastalize this thing defensively and almost never offensively, uh, and that would help you out quite a bit. Probably Terra Fire. Terra Fire is good. Actually, Terra Fire is a phenomenal type for Galarian Zapdos. You're not weak to Rock already uh, because you're half Fighting type. You get the Burn immunity, um, and on top of that, with Safety Goggles, you're basically immune to any status that they would want to hit you with, um, but also you gain that Fairy Resist. That could be good. AV is also not a bad item for this guy. Regular Moltres. Um, another one I'm cautiously optimistic for. I don't see it being amazing. Once again, your time's for weak to rock. Uh, but Moltres has been decent despite that. It is a good, you know, tailwind heat wave user. Uh, it does get access to Hurricane. Funny enough, um, the teams that Moltres has been most successful on have been rain teams. Uh, because on rain teams, it was able to one-shot Pokemon like Ferrothorn. That being said, I don't we, we don't have Ferrothorn this game, so that niche doesn't really exist. Um, I don't really see it being the best Pokemon ever, but I see it being, once again, pretty serv uh, serviceable. It's sort of bulky. It, it reminds me a lot of like Zapdos bulk, but Zapdos, you know, with 90, 85, 90, and Moltres has 90, 90, 85. Uh, I don't know. They could do something. This thing's going to be a demon. All right. I don't know if you guys remember, but this thing was introduced into a Dynamax format, and it had access to a little move called, oh my God, what is it called? Fiery Wrath. Fiery Wrath is dark type rock slide that can't miss and is a special attack. Galarian Moltres is probably going to be one of the best Pokemon in the game, in my opinion. Give it a defensive terror type. Probably Steel is decent, right? Give it a defensive terror type. Run Fiery Wrath. You don't even really need Nasty Plot. You can just run like the standard like Citrus Berry set people were running. Because Citrus Berry would let you proc Berserk like twice, right? It'd be like Citrus Berry, Tailwind, Fiery Wrath, Protect, maybe Nasty Plot if you need it, but like Air Slash and Hurricane were fine. This set went crazy, dude. You would just run like a bulky Galarian Moltres. Can you hit um 155? You can. You can hit 155, which means you can just run, you know, this. Maybe just this. Yeah. Poggers. Um, yeah, this move's crazy. 20% chance to make opponents flinch. Obviously, it's worse flinch chance than Rock Slide. I don't know if that's new, actually. I thought it was 30 the whole time. Uh, but yeah, Rock Slide's 30%. Fiery Wrath is not. Am I stupid? Was Rock Slide 30%? Let me check. Okay, yeah, it is it is worse, but like that's with the fact that it can't miss. So it's it's like a really good, it's a really good move. But yeah. Um oh my god, we're already like 20 minutes into this video and we're not even done with the first box probably time to speed up a little bit uh so those guys typhlosion it's scarf eruption that's all it's really gonna do in my opinion scarf eruption is fine uh if it weren't outclassed by its new form is it slower yes is it still fine in my opinion yeah it's actually still probably really good um all you really need to outspeed is like the base uh, 135, which is, uh, you know, uh, opposing Chen Pao and um, Fluttermane. 
And your Scarf Eruption is actually really good. I actually think this is going to be a decent Pokemon. Uh, you have access to Scarf Eruption, Shadow Ball. It does have its new move, whatever that thing is called. I don't think it's that good. Uh, Infernal Parade. It could be good on like non-Scarf sets, but I think for Scarf, you almost always run Shadow Ball. Uh, but yeah, 30% burn is really nice, uh, especially when it's it's basically just like what Scald should have been, but like Ghost type. And yeah, uh, also it's Hex. It's Scald, Hex, and, and Shadow Ball in, in the one move. I don't know how to explain it. Uh, but yeah, it has access to that. Uh, I do think it is still a... You probably also want Heat Wave in case you have to like swap out. Maybe Flamethrower. Sorry, Flamethrower. And then like a coverage move, whatever that might be. Um, it doesn't have too much special coverage. Maybe Solar Beam and like Sun Teams. Who knows? Extra Sensory also isn't like the worst coverage ever. It does have a flinch chance and it does allow you to hit poison types. Quagsire. It's probably all right. Probably not. The Suing Quillfish I'm excited for. Um, it's a new Intimidate Pokemon. It is probably our first solid Eviolite Pokemon of the generation that isn't Murkrow. Um, and it is very, very bulky. Uh, so 65 HP, not that great. But having 85 defense and 55 special defense and, you know, a decent speed tier, just hit that like 107, whatever. Um, what you can actually do is just like invest heavily in your Spidef. You could do like, what's the nature? Uh, careful nature and do like, I don't know, four defense, four attack. Sorry, why is it zero attack? Four defense, four attack, and like a ton of special defense. And that's actually like really, really bulky. Um, I don't know if it gets pain split. It doesn't get pain split. That would have been really good. Uh, but it is able to do quite a bit here. It does have access to icy wind speed control, which I think is very important. Barbarage isn't a bad move. Um, because it is a 50% poison chance. What you can actually do is just run that as your main stab, in my opinion. It's not like you're dealing damage with poison jab that much anyways. So what Barbarage will do is it'll hit your opponent, and then if it poisons them, which there's a 50% chance to, then it'll hit them for uh, double power. So it becomes a 120 base power move versus poisoned opponents. That is very scary, in my opinion. Uh, it, it is a new Haze user, which I actually think is probably going to be optimal on it. It'll allow you to deal with Dondozo. Like I said, you're intimidating Dondozo, and even though you're weak to, like, Earthquake, um, I think that with the Eviolite plus the Intimidate, you'll live the Earthquake just fine. Uh, so you're able to do that. Has access to a couple of other, like, decent moves. Um, it's mostly just going to be utility support. I wish it got U-Turn. If it got U-Turn, that'd be insane. I wish it got Flip Turn, man. Flip Turn would be huge for it. But yeah, um, other moves that you'd probably run in it. I don't think Destiny Bond's the worst option, especially if you're um, expecting it to not like go terribly far in the format. Does it get Swords Dance? And does it have the ability to be like a bulky Swords Dance user? Yeah, I don't think it's actually going to need to do that. I think your are is going to be running like Barbarage, Icy Wind, Haze, and then Dark Coverage. Does it get Throat Chop? If it gets Throat Chop, that's probably optimal. Doesn't get Throat Chop. Yeah, so you're just going to run like Crunch or whatever. Good Pokemon, in my opinion. Actually, like a very solid Pokemon. Overquill is interesting. Um, I think Intimidate is good. Swift Swim might also have a niche. Uh, basically, we have a Swift Swim Pokemon that doesn't have water as one of its typing, which is kind of rare. Um, last time we had that was had this was like Bear Tick. I think that. Please tell me you hit 155. Okay, so it doesn't outspeed plus one Iron Bundle with Swift Swim active. So it's probably not going to be the best Pokemon. That being said, um, I think Intimidate's still fine. Assault Vest, like, Overquill is probably going to be really good. Dark and Poison is a good typing. Um, but I think what you would just do is run, like, Adamant. Right? Uh, you would probably just want to run, like, Max HP too and just, like, enough Adamant to hit, like, the jump, whatever that is. There we go. Uh, invest enough speed where at plus two you outspeed like Dragapult in case you have like a Tailwind user and put the rest in like Spidef and HP. And that's actually a decently bulky Pokemon with that Intimidate. Barbarage, I would say, is still the best move for it um, because of the, you know, high ability to just hit things for a lot of damage. Um, it does still get Icy Wind, so I do think Icy Wind is still like a staple move you'd want on it. Does it get Throat Chop? Tell me it gets Throat Chop. doesn't get Throat Chop. All right. So you would still run Crunch, and then like your last move would just be whatever. Haze is probably still not the worst. But yeah, uh, interesting Pokemon. I don't think it's going to be bad. Sneasler could be stupid, in my opinion. Sneasler could be very stupid. 
Uh, because of its move, better poison jab. Dire Claw. 50% chance to sleep, poison, or paralyze the target. It's random which one of these you get. And it's 50% chance to do that. Never have I thought the Covert Cloak was more important. Also gets Fake Out, close combat, and I don't even know what move you'd run on this. U-turn? It gets a U-turn. All right. Sash. There we go. We've done it. We don't, we'll also put a Poison Touch on it because that just increases the chances, I believe. Yeah, this Pokemon's going to be stupid. I'm not ready for getting Dire Clawed and Slept. Oh my god, wait. Hold on. So what are the odds of getting Dire Clawed and Slept? So let me pull up my calculator. So it's 0.33 times 0.5. All right, there's a 16% chance that this move just sleeps you. Because it's a third of the time it does a status, it'll do... So 50% of the time you'll get status, and a third of that time it will be sleep. So it's a 16.5% chance you just go to sleep. Insane. Uh, Yuxi, probably not that good. We have Cresselia. Move on to box number two. Ugh, this box is going to take a while to get through. Am I going to get to go on my run on time? If I can wrap up this video in 18 minutes, I can go on my run on time. Okay, Mesprit, probably not that good. Don't want to cover it. Azelf, probably not that good. Not interested in coming here. Do you get Expanding Force? Nope, nothing gets Expanding Force. Okay, Heatran, very important Pokemon. Very, very important Pokemon. Do we have a lot of good Fire types this gen? Yes. Heatran, though, is a hard check to Fluttermane. Like, we do not have a check as hard to Fluttermane as Heatran, except... Maybe Ursa Luna, but really it's it's like the it's the fairy stab that you're concerned about, right? Heatran's good. Heatran's good, man. Um, it doesn't get eruption or anything. Obviously, that was an event move. Uh, but just being able to run like Heat Wave, Flash Cannon, Earth Power Protect, the old reliable set with like a Shooka Berry. It'd be really solid. Um It'll probably pair up with Cresselia. I think that like I think Iron Hands, Heatran, Cresselia is going to be like a core. Like, I like, I think that's actually really solid. Um, obviously, it does have a ground weakness, but, you know, you have Cresselia and, like, other Pokemon. Actually, Iron Hands, Heatran, Cresselia, uh, Landorus is probably going to be a thing. Um, and I'm I'm going to build that immediately. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's going to be a thing. Uh, Cresselia is a really good Trick Room user. Probably our best Trick Room user now. I don't think there's a reason not to run Trick Room Cresselia. So, like, Trick Room... You can honestly run like both moves, Trick Room, Icy Wind, Psychic, Helping Hand. That's probably a moveset. Uh, I think you always run Helping Hand. This is this thing's demonic next to um Pretty Fast Bear, aka um What's it called? Ursa Luna. Like Ursa Luna with like Helping Hand and Terra Ground Earthquake with Guts. That's gonna be stupid. One of the best Heatran checks, obviously. Uh, but yeah, uh, Cresselia is going to be a really good Pokemon. I don't think there's a reason not to run Cresselia on your team right now. Um, I don't... In, in fact, we actually might see more Terra Ghost Fluttermane because of this. Because Terra Ghost Fluttermane will be able to one-shot Cresselia. But that's that's whatever. Samurott, I don't see being good. Hisuian Samurott, I see actually being decent. I already talked about this in the previous video. Um, but it has access to uh, this new move called Ceaseless Edge. Really good water move. Uh, a really good you know, dark move. It has knockoff power, um, effectively with, uh, the sharpness ability, uh, and that will allow you to set up spikes every time you hit something. I, I think regulation D is going to be chaotic. I'll be honest. The more I'm looking at what we're about to get access to, it's basically a whole new game. And I'm really excited about that. Uh, razor shell is a decent move, uh, for sharpness because it is sharpness boosted. However, I think you would just run aqua cutter to not have to deal with that chance to, to miss. It's only a little bit, it's only a little bit weaker. So I would personally run aqua cutter. Uh, it does also get aqua jet. And I think that your last move sort of up to your discussion, knockoff isn't the worst. Icy wind isn't the worst either if you're running an assault vest set. Um, but yeah, really good Pokemon. The Sui and Lilligant, not terribly excited to face, but I don't actually think it's going to be like the best Pokemon ever. It does get Victory Dance, which is Physical Quiver Dance, and Sleep Powder, and Chlorophyll. And does it get any good Grass moves that are like physical? Leaf Blade, yep. Leaf Blade, Close Combat, probably going to be the two moves it runs. And yeah, uh, I mean, it kind of needs a Sash. I think that, does it get after you? 
Okay, so on like Torkoal teams, you're still probably not gonna run that. Actually, you might. You you might run this set instead of like um, the other set because you'll probably be able to like one shot Fluttermane with like a Life Orb or whatever. Um, but you would still just go for like you know after you and Sleep Powder and stuff. So I'm kind of up in the air about how good this is. Physical Quiver Dance is really good, but that's in a game with Intimidate. I think you would need to run Clear Amulet, and then you still get one shot by Arcanine. So it's it's very up in the air how good that Pokemon's gonna be. Basque Legion is as good as Rain is. Um, adaptability is really solid. It's unflinchable because of its ghost typing and it does get wave crash. So I could actually see maybe choice ban Basque Legion being a thing. Do you get flip turn? Tell me you get flip turn. You don't get flip turn. Oh my god. Um, yeah, I think you would choice ban it. Aqua Jet. Wave crash. Um, what ghost moves do you get? You would definitely run last respects. That is that is a solid pick. Um, and then like your last move, maybe head smash, maybe psychic fangs. We'll go with psychic fangs for now because that's actually not a bad set. Um, and probably just like Jolly. Jolly Max Max with adaptability. Um, alternatively, you could run Choice Scarf, and that's not bad either because end game last respects with adaptability is one of the um most ridiculous things I've ever heard about. I don't want to have to face that. Uh, I do think that you're probably going to want to run like Swift Swim on like Life Orb sets. Um, and that how good that is depends heavily on how good Iron Bundle ends up being. Because like I said, you're not outspeeding Iron Bundle if you're not hitting 155, which this thing does not hit 155. So excited to see how good Basket Legion is. Hisuian Zoroark. Honestly, I'm going to run a Mouse Ape team with Hisuian Zoroark on it instead of um, Annihilate. Or instead of like, you know, some other Pokemon, but like I'm going to pretend it's Annihilate and people are just going to have to deal with that. People are just going to have to deal with that lead now. That is scary. That is a very scary thing. Um, it is interesting in that this is technically, if you if you play it right, it can deal with a lot of things. It, it's a ghost type that can disguise itself as something that isn't immune to flinch. And something else that you can do is just like, you know, choice specs it. <laughs> You can just choice specs it and hit something with like a shadow ball or or um like a hyper voice and it's actually like really threatening. I don't know. Uh just having that free first turn off a base 125 special attack and not being able to be flinched is really big. Um Hisuian Braviary. I don't see it being that good, but it is really scary. It is a sheer force life orb user. However, we do have Landris, so I'm not gonna dwell on this one too much. Uh Esper Wing is pretty interesting. You would not run Sheer Force on that, you would run Tinted Lens. But it does raise its speed by one uh, stage, uh, and it does give it a, a high crit chance. So, if you were to run that, I would say probably just hit that 107 speed tier, see how it's be Dragapult after two of these. Do something like that. I don't know. Interesting Pokemon. Tornadus. Overcloak. Tailwind. Rest in peace, Murkrow. No reason to run it. Look, literally, no reason to run it. Sunny Day's on this thing, too. Bleak Wind Storm gives it a solid, um, I mean, you don't want to run it over Air Slash, in my opinion, if you're running Sunny Day, but Bleak Wind Storm does give it a decent, like, spread move, which is really crazy. We don't actually have good spread, um, <laughs> we actually, we actually don't have good spread, uh, flying moves, so, like, that's really new, uh, but it is super inaccurate. Um, I think that Tornadus has high potential. It, it would need its own video. Tornadus Therian, probably not notable. Thunderous, another Pokemon that would probably need its own entire video, and I guarantee you I'm going to have to make a video after this thing wins Worlds. Uh, but, yeah, so it has access to Thunder Wave with Prankster, as well as Eerie Impulse. I talked about this in the other video, so I'm not going to dwell too much about it. Good Safety Goggles user. Good Taunt user. Thunderbolt. Run it bulky. You don't care about Iron Bundle at all. Thunderous Therian, probably as good as it'll ever be. Landorus. Life Orb. Sheer Force, Earth Power, Sludge Bomb, Sand Seer Storm, if you want to get crazy with it, it basically becomes um, Precipice Blades. Yeah, I mean, that's basically just Precipice Blades. I'm actually really scared for that one. Uh, but also, it doesn't get Acrobatics. I know Thunderous gets Acrobatics, though. So that's interesting. Uh, but uh, also, it can run Aeroblast now. To give it flying coverage. So yeah. Assault Vest Landers is going to be very good. Swords Dance Landers is going to be very good. Um, it is a hard check 
to non-ice spinner great tusks uh it is going to be high high usage that is all i'm going to say about lander Therian. chestnut probably not good delphox probably not good greninja probably not good and keep in mind this is vgc like a lot of people are gonna be like what do you mean greninja is not good it got nerfed it got nerfed yeah battle bonds interesting but i don't know if that's actually gonna be legal uh, so yeah, um, Protein Greninja, probably not good. Um, I think it'll be fine. Isu and Gudra, optimistic about. Um, Assault Vest Isu and Gudra is actually really good with uh, Sap Sipper. It'll allow it to be Spore Immune um, while also getting an attack boost every time it gets hit by a grass move. I've actually been pairing it with, um, what's it called? I've been pairing it with a Wo Chen because Wo Chen is able to Pollen Puff it to heal off some damage. Uh, it also makes up for that pretty low, uh, not pretty low physical defense because it's good, 80, 100, but comparable to like uh, the rest of its stats, its physical defense is lacking a little bit. Um, yeah, I think it's a, a decent Pokemon. It is technically a hard counter to Fluttermane, Flash Cannon, uh, Muddy Water, Draco Meteor, probably Flamethrower, or Ice Beam. Ice Beam is actually probably better. Ice Beam, and then like, I think Terra Water is like always the play for it personally. Because now we have like a good muddy water user. That's really exciting. Avalug. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Decidueye, probably not the best Pokemon. It's unflinchable Tailwind. Not too notable. Assuming Decidueye, I also don't think it's going to be that good. We have a lot of fighting type competition this gen. Um, but we, we will spend a little bit more time on it. Does it get Tailwind? Yes. Triple Arrows is interesting in the fact that... Um, it lowers defense every time, or 50% chance to lower defense, 50% chance to flinch, high crit ratio. There's a lot of things going on with this move, but it's just not fast enough to make the most of it. I, I don't know. I think that if you were to use it, it would just be Sash, Tailwind, Triple Arrows, Leaf Blade, and like Detect, or Protect, whatever move it gets, and that's like it. Rillaboom lost Grassy Glide. That being said, Rillaboom was still fine without Grassy Glide. Uh, fake Out, Wood Hammer... U-turn, knockoff, with an Assault Vest. It's still a good Pokemon. You know, it didn't need Grassy Glide to be good. It did need it to be broken, though. That is what I'll say. Um, It did need it to be broken. It's so maybe like this. Yeah, good Pokemon. Good Pokemon. Uh, also, can now run Terra Fire. You can't be burned. Last batch of Pokemon. We're going to speed run this one. That's the wrong box. Cinderace is probably going to be not that good. It has a decent speed tier. Um, it was kind of carried by Dynamax, in my opinion, because it doesn't have, like, the bulk. Pyro Ball isn't the most accurate move. 90 accuracy, it's pretty uh, pretty bad in that sense. Uh, it's just Flare Blitz, but, you know, it's, it's, it's Flare Blitz, but it, it doesn't make contact, which you don't really need that. Also, no recoil. Inteleon, probably not going to be the best either. However, that speed tier is a lot more usable in this format. Uh, we might be able to see Inteleon do something with, I don't know, Snipe Shot. Actually, it is one of the few Pokemon with an 80 base power water move that, like, is special. It, it could be interesting. I don't think it's going to be amazing, though. But, um, yeah, maybe, like, Sash, Snipe Shot, Icy Wind, um, Protect... Dark Pulse could be interesting. I don't, I don't think it's going to be like amazing though. Urshifu Single Strike is going to be the best Pokemon in the game. Let me, let me explain why. Did they nerf Wicked Blow? Yes. It's still Wicked Blow, dude. It's st it still hits through Protect, dude. It's still, it's still Urshifu, dude. I don't even need to like get, go too in depth with why this one's gonna be great. You can't protect versus Urshifu. I think that's inherently broken. Um, it has base 130 attack, access to Wicked Blow, which is always gonna crit. That's a Don Dozo answer technically. I think that like you can two shot Don Dozo if you run like Terra Dark. Um, so that's bad for Don Dozo. And yeah, um, Urshifu Rapid Strike, same same exact Pokemon, but instead of um, Instead of Sucker Punch and Wicked Blow, you have Surging Strikes and Aqua Jet. I do think Surging... I, I do think Urshfu Rapid Strike is in contention for being the best Pokemon in the game. Um, and that's because it 
is just like another great physical attacking water type like palafin but it also hits through sashes so sashes isn't going to be um a way to deal with it so yeah uh this guy has the potential to break the game regieleki another potential best pokemon in the game i'm actually on team covert cloak regieleki personally i'm on team covert cloak and here's why iron bundle still outspeeds regieleki um at plus one because iron bundle hits 309 regieleki hits 277 iron bundle probably would need to land a hydro pump to one shot you so i actually think you would bulk out your regieleki to make sure you don't get hit by that but then you would still run electro web which is gonna one shot iron bundle it's going to one shot iron bundle slow down the partner next to it and then your own flutter main can one shot both of them simple as that um yeah i think regieleki's gonna probably win worlds if thunderous doesn't reggie drago actually got a solid buff this gen it now has access to earth power and earthquake that's huge um however there are no misty terrain pokemon in this game at the moment uh it has access to dragon energy and the choice scarf item or the choice specs let's go with choice specs for now obviously it's not gonna be able to outspeed you know iron bundle even with the timid nature you're just short of that but you can outspeed everything else like let's say you just hit that that bare minimum speed tier of 107 and do this and you're like set you just drag in energy everything under tailwind it is a decent pokemon now not the best especially with terra so you know i'm i'm, I'm optimistic for reggie drago teams i don't think they're gonna be the best though you need to go back to sword and shield and hunt for that zero speed glacier it wasn't necessary before now you need to um so i think that glacier is actually really really good it underspeeds a lot of things and it now has access to terra and the clear amulet its biggest weakness was intimidate before and the fact that it could be burned or slept it now has the tools to deal with it it is a good pokemon one it's basically a legendary pokemon in a non-legendary dex um or it is a legendary but like it's like a restricted legendary it has like groudon stats bro it's like if they let like ice type groudon into this game you know um it does have access to icicle crash it doesn't have high horsepower anymore which i think is a shame but heavy slam is really good um honestly i think ice cream crash protect heavy slam sword dance is gonna be like the best set yeah i think that's gonna be stupid actually it, 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 it could be a little bit stupid i'm excited for this specter is probably gonna get almost no usage because flutter main exists but i'm i think it could be decent um it does snowball its special attack stat by getting ko's i'm i'm always proven wrong when i say specter is bad i'm hoping i am this time weirdier uh technically a flutter main answer uh it does have access to intimidate as well as size shield bash which um it always raises its defense stat so i could actually see like does it get body press it doesn't get body press what a throw what a throw of a pokemon okay um okay what if you do like assault vest intimidate size shield bash and just like max hp max attack that could be decent that could be decent for all i know i don't think so um what good normal move does it get double edge i mean it's a decent double edge user sure maybe even give it like leftovers instead side shield bash double edge protect and it's thunder wave actually thunder wave wouldn't be a bad move on it actually thunder wave is a really good move on it now that i'm looking at this thing uh yeah actually that's not bad not the worst Pokemon. Interested to see what it can do. I don't think you would actually run Advent Max Attack. I think you would just run Psyshield Bash as like your main stab option, but you wouldn't um, be clicking it like every turn of the game. It's an interesting Pokemon. Okay. It does get Trick Room too. Trick Room is extremely notable. Yeah. Slower than Cresselia. Cleaver. Stealth Rocks are now good in BGC. Stone Axe. I do think Sash is necessary in Cleaver, personally. The more I look at it, the more I think Sash is necessary. Um, protect. Is x Scissor boosted by... Sharpness? I'm not sure, but you would probably still run x Scissor in like close combat. Fury Cutter is also boosted by Sharpness, and what's funny is it becomes 120 after a single Fury Cutter. So, I don't know. Could be interesting. Uh, yeah, no, you would do this. It also gets Tailwind, which is scary. Uh, pretty fast bear you know we already know what it's gonna do uh it's gonna run the flame orb it's guts 
You're going to want to run it under Trick Room. Max attack. Probably max HP. Or you could optimize it so you take the, the least amount of damage from the Flame Orb. I forget what it is. I think it ends in like a 9. Um, and then, yeah. Uh, you would hit things with Facade. You would hit things with Earthquake. Probably still run Protect. And I actually think Drain Punch is a good final move. Um, and yeah. Terra Ground next to... Cresselia with Helping Hand Earthquake, everything's dropping. Everything's dropping. It's a stupid Pokemon. Love it so much. Enamorous. This version is probably always going to run Contrary. Um, I don't see a reason not to run Contrary. Uh, Superpower. Really good. Play Rough. Protect. I think Citrus Berry or Leftovers is going to be good. Leftovers is probably going to be a little bit better. Um, does it get Drain Punch? It doesn't get Drain Punch. It does get Iron Head, though. So I think what you'd actually do is run Terra Steel. As your Terra type. And this would be like your general set. Um, you would want to outspeed all like the base 100s. So I think that's like what? 155? 156? Whatever. Uh, and you would just like... I don't know. You could even bulk this thing out, to be honest. You, you wouldn't even need to run like Max Attack. I guess you would run enough like attack where you KO the things that you really want to KO. Like, um, I don't know. If, let's say, Hydreigon for some reason becomes, like, standard, you would just want to make sure your play rough one-shots Hydreigon. Whatever it is. I don't know. I'm just talking out my butt here. Uh, Anamorous Therian. Actually a really decent Pokemon. It doesn't get access to Trick Room, but it is, like, very scary with a Life Orb. I've had to face this thing. Life Orb, Moonblast, um, Earth Power... Does it get Draining Kiss 2, Sludge Bomb? It's a really scary Trick Room attacker. It's actually one of the scariest, considering it's immune to, um, you know, Rage Powder and uh, Spore. Yeah, um, actually a very good Pokemon that I think is going to be extremely difficult to deal with in, with certain teams because um, of how bulky it is. Base 110 Defense, 100 Special Defense, 74 HP, 135 Special Attack. It's a good Pokemon. Does it get Nasty Plot? Does it get Nasty Plot? Give me ghoul roaming is going to break the format. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I just want to get my thoughts out there. My initial thoughts on everything that's about to be legal. Uh, I know we didn't go too in depth with any one particular Pokemon, but this was an emergency video. Emergency. Wee, 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 wee. Uh, thank you all for watching. I appreciate uh, your support. If you want to check out the Patreon. There's some bonus content over there. Um, and yeah, if you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.